Hey, the Raspberry Pi 400 reminds me of the microcomputer. Ironically, I've been having a hankering for retro DOS games and wanted to put together a system that was as close to the experience as I could, and I remembered the microcomputer and knew instantly it was the right design for the job. So is it easy to set up DOS games on the Raspberry Pi 400? And can it give me that retro microcomputer nostalgic feel that I've been looking for? Let's get into it. <laughs> Now we have all seen the Raspberry Pi 400. It's a sleek little keyboard, which is essentially the Raspberry Pi. On the top as well, the keyboard, which is okay, I guess. The keys are really low profile, really close to the case, and don't have much of a throw. I got one of the keys off, which by the way is a nerve wracking process, and it appears that there is a very tiny nub. The keyboard does take some getting used to, with a lot of mistakes along the way, because it gets hard to feel where one key ends and the other one starts. On the back is three USBs, two micro HDMI's, micro SD card slot, Ethernet, and GPIO pins. On the inside is a redesigned Raspberry Pi 4 specifically for the 400. It has a Broadcom quad core 64 bit 1.8 gigahertz SOC and 4 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. I first gave Botticera a go, headed over to the Botticera website and downloaded the image for Pi 400. Opened Etcher, which you can head over to the Etcher website and download the software specifically for your operating system. Load the Botticera image, choose the SD card, and then start a the flashing process. When Botticera first boots up, there's no need to set up a controller because Botticera recognizes it automatically, so that means the first step is to set up the Wi-Fi. Setting up Wi-Fi is simple. Click Start, Network Settings, punch in the Wi-Fi SSID, and the pass key. Next, we connect to Botticera on your PC, open File Explorer, type in backslash backslash Botticera and click enter. Click share, ROMs, DOS, and here is where you're going to put your DOS games. You can get your DOS games from searching the interwebs or from connecting a CD drive to the Pi 400, which I'm thinking about testing in the future, so if you're interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments down below. Drag your games folder to the DOS folder on Botticera, right click and type .pc after the name. The games will show up in the menu system of Botticera, click one, and you will either have to install the game in DOSBox or run the games.exe. Now here is where it became a mess for me. You can set up the controls for the keyboard in the games menu or via the setup file, but where, as it worked for Tomb Raider, I had problems in Doom and I got extremely frustrated. For Doom, I set up the WASD for the movement and the strafe keys. Most keys worked, but the A key would strafe left and fire. It was quite weird and I couldn't solve the problem. Also gave the original Duke Nukem the 2D game a try, and after setting up the keys, A once again would move left, but also bring up the pause menu. Okay, I'm sure there's probably a fix for this, but at this point, I just gave up and decided it was time to move on to RetroPie. I used the generic image of RetroPie, which you can find on the RetroPie website, and by now, I'm sure you know how to flash the image to an SD card. Like Botticera, you have to set up the Wi-Fi on the RetroPie, and it's a little different on this front end. There are two ways, RetroPie, RetroPie Config, System Config, Wireless LAM, and then enter your credentials. Second way is to just select Wi-Fi in the RetroPie menu, connect to Wi-Fi network, choose Wi-Fi router, and enter passkey. Now to download the DOSBox core, RetroPie, RetroPie Setup. First update the RetroPie Setup script, or you might get an error while installing DOSBox, then manage pack Packages, manage optional packages, scroll down the DOS box and install from pre-compiled binary. Now let's connect to RetroPie via Wi-Fi, open File Explorer, backlash, backlash, RetroPie and click enter. Click ROMs down the PC, and this is where you will drag your .pc game folders. Now here, I created a .game folder, which will be hidden to keep the RetroPie menu clean, and I got this idea from Learn Linux TV's YouTube channel. Next step is to create the config file, which originally I was using a pre-made sample from the Learn Linux TV's website, and it just wouldn't work. I was able to run DOSBox and get the game installed or running via DOSBox, but couldn't get it to load via the RetroPie menu. It would load DOSBox, attempt to load the game file, and just go back to the RetroPie menu. I took 
all Saturday messing around with this and realized there had to be a problem with the config file finding the path, but I just couldn't seem to find a way to fix it. At this point, it was getting late, I was getting tired, and it became evident that the video was not making it out that night. But I couldn't quit till I found the solution. Finally, around 8 or 9 that night, I came across a thread and it had a solution. There was a problem with the syntax. Copied the original config file from the config backslash PC folder and just added the new line to the bottom. It worked. Oh, thank God. God. Don't forget to rename each config file to the game's name, and this is how it will appear in the RetroPie menu. I am planning on putting together a list of config files and settings for each game on my website. This list will be updated every so often as I get some of the DOS games working that I couldn't get running at the time of making this video. Okay, so I figured out how to get the config file to find the game, but how does games run? Doom ran pretty well after changing some of the settings and there was no problem with the A button and the game seemed to run at normal pace versus Botticera where it seemed a little sped up. Other games I tested was Jazz Jackrabbit which there was some slowdown in the main menu but when the game got started it seemed to run well. Quick after setting up the controllers ran really well and the same for Wolfenstein. Now Shadow Warrior there was no way to set up the controls in games so you're stuck with the default arrow keys for movement unless you go in the DOS box and run the setup.exe. Sadly, I couldn't get Grand Theft Auto to work when I'm currently working on it, and Duke Nukem I couldn't get installed because it seemed like when you press the backslash on the Raspberry Pi 400, it would click the asterisk. So did the Raspberry Pi 400 scratch my itch for retro DOS and microcomputer gaming? Uh, yes and no. While it was great to relive those classic retro computer games, it it was kind of a hassle and things just didn't run the way they did on the computers they were designed to run on. Like this Windows 95 neck laptop which I have plans for this guy in the future. However someday these games will be hard to find or even completely gone so emulation and FPGA will be the only way to experience them. Now as for the Raspberry Pi 400, it unfortunately didn't give me the microcomputer feel I was looking for, but this guy just might. And we're gonna be taking a look at this case in the next video, so if you're interested, you know what to do. Don't forget to check out some of the resource and product links below. Also consider following us on the WeDeem Facebook group. Look forward to sharing opinions and other gaming content that just doesn't make it in videos here. As for now, I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, instead of staring at my ugly mug, why don't you go ahead and check out one of our other videos? One, two, I'll wait. My busted face ain't going nowhere.